Hi and welcome to another Palladium Accounting video tutorial. In this video we're going to be having a look at our inventory forecasting feature. The purpose of this feature is to optimize the inventory holding and ordering within an organization by managing minimum and maximum levels and it also allows us to consider multiple variables such as lead time, safety factors and economic order quantities amongst others which we're going to touch on. Okay, so the first place I want to start is within the inventory master file setup. So I'm just going to go into this item here, this Lenovo laptop, and we're going to go to this reorder tab. So there's a few settings in here we need to consider. So firstly, we have the ability to forecast at company level, so we can have a maximum and minimum level here. And also, if you have multiple branches in your company, they will display down here. And then you'll see there's five variables over here to the right hand side. We have safety factor, order lead time, day sales and stock, economic order factor, and minimum order quantity. So when we get to the next step, which involves running our inventory forecasting, all of these fields play a role in that calculation. So our safety factor percentage is basically a buffer. So for example, if, if we're looking at a historical sales period of last December to help us forecast this December, we might just want to put a buffer in there just to protect ourselves in case we expect an increase in sales. So I'm going to leave a, a percentage there of 20%. Then the order lead time is the vendor delivery time. So this works in day, days, so I'm saying 10 days. And then we also have the option for number of days stock holding required. So this is just saying I put 60 in there, so I want to, I want to order enough stock to meet the demands of sales for the next 60 days without me needing to reorder. We then have the economic order quantity. So this is the multiple in which to order goods from your supplier. So they might only allow you to buy in quantities of 20s from them, for example. Our minimum order quantity uh, is basically the minimum order quantity that your supplier will sell to you. So you might need to buy a Lenovo laptop, but they will only send the minimum order is 10, for example. Okay, so that's our inventory setup, so I'm just going to close here. And then our next part is to use the inventory forecasting module. So let's make this full screen. I'm going to load it. I'm going to do this at company level. And here I can select the sales period that we want to have a look at to help us forecast um, and calculate our new minimum level and new maximum quantity. So here, within that uh, sales period that I've selected, it's saying I've had 10 sales, I've sold 10 Lenovo laptops. My daily sales on average is 0.33. And we have the lead time of 10% there. We've also got the safety factor of 20%. Those both of which are pulling from our inventory master file that we just had a look at. So it's a new stock item. We didn't have an old minimum level for it. And then based on the calculation that it's using, it suggests the new minimum level should be full. So you'll see here, this gives you the calculation if I hover over the column header. So it's daily sales, which is my 0.33, multiplied by my lead time of 10, plus my safety factor percentage, which actually comes to about 3.96, so it's rounding it up to a minimum level of 4. Okay, and then to calculate our new maximum quantity, again, if we just hover over the column there, it gives us the calculation. So it's looking at our new minimum level of 4 plus days sales in stock that we want to cater for, which is the 60 days, uh, plus new daily sales times 0.33, which comes to just under about under 20, so which plus the 4 gives us the 24 that's suggesting. So once you've run this, you'll just press save. You'll then update your inventory master file accordingly. So if I go back into my inventory item, We'll see here my maximum level is 24 and my minimum level is 4. So at this point, at any point in time, if we want to see what items are below our minimum level and therefore need reordering to meet our demands, I can go to inventory reports, we can go to quantity reports, I can also do it by location. Uh, so the, the, the key factor, the key filter on here is the this option here. So if without ticking this option, it's going to give me my full inventory list. If I tick this option, it'll only, it'll only display the items that need reordering. 
So you'll see when I run this report, it's showing that I just need to order in this item. So here it's suggesting that I need to order in 35, uh, a quantity of 35 to reach my maximum level of 24. And you can see by the other columns that are displayed here, it takes into account my sales order and my purchase order quantities and also what's in being manufactured. So you'll see how it gets to the required quantity of 33. So it's saying, okay, we've got one laptop on hand minus my 20. That takes us to an available quantity of minus 19. We've also got a purchase order for 10, which takes us to minus 9. So in order to get to the maximum level of 24, we need to order 33. And just whilst we're also on this screen, um, obviously this re re is reliant on users remembering to run this report maybe on a daily or weekly basis. Uh, we also do have a Palladium Alerts module available where we can set up automated triggers in the database to say, please send the inventory control manager or whoever uh, email notification to let them know when an item has gone below the minimum level, for example. Or we could automate this report on a daily basis. Just something to consider. So in real terms, you can have multiple items that display on this list. So the next step would be obviously to order these items. So we have the option, we have two options here. So on all purchase documents, we've got a very uh, smart feature. It's often considered to be one of our hidden secrets on Palladium. So I'll first select a, a supplier and then this little button over here, order form. So this displays all items that need reordering. So if I select OK, it'll bring all those items through automatically. You can also, if I go back into there, to create a new document, you can also filter this by supplier, which looks at the items that have been linked in the supplier master file. The other option we have is using this feature here, create PO from reorder. So straight away, you notice the difference here is we don't have this supplier the supplier at document level, the supplier is at line level. So the reason for that is if we have 100 items below the minimum level, that might be that might comprise of 50 different suppliers. So it allows us to allocate the supplier at line level rather than at document level. So the idea of this is when, I, when I've got all my items and I've linked them all to a different supplier, will generate multiple documents in one go. And as you notice, this generated a purchase requisition. If you wanted to go straight to a purchase order, there is just a setting available in our control panel. The payables, and it's this one here, create from bulk reorder form, purchase requisition or purchase order. So you can just switch that over if you want to. Okay, and that brings us to the end of this video tutorial. Thank you for your time. If you have any inquiries, uh, please contact us on the details provided here. All right, and thank you. Enjoy your day further. If you do have any um, requests on video tutorials, please let me know in the comment section. Thanks a lot. Bye.